Oh, there we go. Goodness gracious. Hey there, Hunter, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Alexis, can you hear me yet? Okay, can you hear me, Alexis? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Sorry it took so long, but it's taken forever and it would not open up. So let's see, let me see if I can get the iPad connected now that I finally got the computer hooked up. So today, Free Algebra Monday. Let's see. If... All right, finally. All right, so evidently the internet is pretty glitchy today. So hopefully, um, I don't know if I'm going to freeze up or. Hopefully it'll all be okay, but I'll try to keep an eye to make sure that if anybody gets bumped out, um, I'll get you back in. All right, so what we'll do is we will go ahead and start with taking a look at our homework. So um, the first thing we had, um, let's see, we had our graphing test that was due. And I think there's a spot to upload that on the website. Let me share my screen real quick. And Ms. Jennifer, I have to leave at 1.30 to get today for a game. Okay, that is just fine. So just whenever you log out and then I'll get, um, I'll post the rest of it. Hopefully it'll be okay and it won't be glitchy. Right. Technology is great when it works, but when it's giving you trouble. <laughs> now notability won't open. There we go. Phew, finally. All righty, so let me get the lights out in here, get us going in here. All right, so we had um, wrapped up our unit on graphing. And remember we talked about how when we graphed, it was showing the solutions for um, an equation that had both an X and a Y variable. And I had to graph it to show my solution, okay? And so we have previously worked with variables. Um, and so now we're kind of shifting gears a little bit to where we're still working with variables, but we're doing different things with our variables, okay? And so we started out with adding and subtracting polynomials. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back for just a minute. Let's do a quick review of polynomial expressions. So we said that um, a polynomial is an expression that has two or more terms. Um, and so we said, but a monomial only has one term and that term can be a number by itself, which is what we call a constant. It can be a variable by itself, which is gonna be represented by a letter um, and it may or may not have an exponent. And then we can also have a coefficient with a variable. And so we looked at kind of our examples of those um, a constant is just a number by itself. A coefficient is a number with a variable that may or may not have an exponent. A monomial is only gonna be a single term. A binomial is gonna be two terms. Trinomial is three terms. And then anything over three, we'll call a polynomial, okay? So if it's four, five, six, however many terms it is, that's when we use the prefix poly to mean many. And then also remember that each term is gonna be separated by a plus or minus sign, 
Okay. I'm sorry. This is on page, come on, uh, 285. Page 285. Okay, so we had um, homework on this section that said identify whether or not each expression is a polynomial. And I think we meant we mostly probably finished this in class if you haven't gotten it yet. I know some of you were out, but um, so basically we were looking to see number one, is it a polynomial? So yes or no. And if it is, is it a constant? Is it a monomial, a binomial, or a trinomial? So let's go ahead and look at these here. So I can see my first one is 7x minus 2. Is this a polynomial? Remember, a polynomial has more than one term. And so it is because I can see I've got 7x minus 2. So yes, it is. And I can see that I have got two terms separated by my minus sign. So two terms is a binomial. Okay, so for the first one, it would be yes, it's a binomial. Now, when we look at the next one, we see something that looks awfully funny. Okay, so actually I can kind of identify both of these things in the next two and kind of look at them and say something looks kind of off on those. And I'm gonna go back and look at my um, directions at the top where it said that for a um, polynomial at the top, notice it says no variables may appear in a denominator. Okay, so in part of my rules about what is a polynomial and what's not, it says that I cannot have a variable in the denominator. So when I look at this next one, I can see that I have an X in my denominator so this is not a polynomial. So that one will be no. And then also when I look at my notes up here, it says that this one cannot be a polynomial because I have a negative two as an exponent and I cannot have a negative exponent in a polynomial. So the next one is also no. All right, now 26. All right, so this is kind of where we can get a little iffy because if it, sa it says, um, okay, so a polynomial is an algebraic expression. So it says, if the expression has two or more, we separate with a plus or minus. So in this one, I have 26, it does not have a plus or minus. So it is still a polynomial, but what kind is it? If it's a single digit, notice it said, is it a constant, a monomial, a binomial, or a trinomial? And what do we say just a number is? That's gonna be just a constant. Okay, so 26 is a polynomial and we call that a constant. Now look at the next one. I have one term, two terms, three terms. We can see I've got them separated with minus and plus. I have an exponent and it's positive, so we're good there. I do not have a variable in my denominator, so I'm good there. So yes, this is a polynomial. And what kind is it? If it's three terms, what kind of polynomial is it with three terms? Remember my prefix, my prefix, <laughs> my prefix tri. So trinomial. If it's a three term polynomial, the prefix for three is tri. So a trinomial. And then the last one, negative seven X. I've got a number with a variable. So yes, it is a polynomial. But I don't have anything, I don't have any, you know, nothing's being added to negative 7x, nothing's being subtracted from 7x. So it is a single term. So it's single is mono, monomial. Okay, so it's a single term polynomial. So that is called a monomial. Any questions on how to determine first and foremost, if it's a polynomial? And then if it is a polynomial, is it a constant? a monomial, a binomial, or a trinomial? Any questions on those? All righty. 
So now let's go to lesson 131 and let's review adding polynomials. In lesson 131, adding polynomials, we said basically adding is the process of combining like terms, okay? So if I'm combining like terms, what I have to do is not only like, I know that numbers can combine with numbers, okay? So constants are like terms. If I have a number with a variable, so like 2x and minus x, because they both have the variable x that has an exponent of one, those are like terms. And then x squared and 2x squared, those are like terms because they have both have the variable x with the same exponent, okay? And so we learned earlier in the year that when I combine like terms, I add or subtract the number in front of the variable and keep the variable and exponent the same. So in the example that they gave us where I have x squared plus 2x plus 3 plus 2x squared minus x plus 1, I know that x squared plus 2x is 3x squared. Um, 2x plus a negative x, that would be the same as 2 plus a negative 1. So that's still going to leave me with a positive 1x. And then 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay, and we talked about how when they're side to side, it's real easy to kind of lose our, our terms and make mistakes. So adding them vertically by lining them up, it kind of helps us kind of like when we do place value, when we add, subtract, multiply and divide or whatever, like when we're, especially with adding numbers, especially like when we do decimals, we have to make sure to line them up in the right places. It's the same thing here where I want to make sure that when I line up my polynomials that I have my variables with the same exponents lined up in one column. So we can see that I've got all my x squareds here. I've got my x's here. And then I have just my numbers lined up here. So I wanna make sure to line them up. And then that way it's much easier to see when I add them together, how to add them together, okay? So in this particular example, we said that x squared is the same as one x squared. We said that X is the same as one X. So I can, if I need to write ones in front of those, I can to help me remember that in this one, I've got two plus one is three and I keep my X squared the same. Then I have one plus one is two and I keep the X the same. Then I have one plus two is three. And whether the sign in between my terms and my answer depends on is my, when I combine it, is it a positive term or a negative term? If it's a positive term, it will be plus something. If it's a negative term, it is minus. So we did that in our classwork. We lined up each of these and we combined like terms. So we took this part over here on the right-hand side. We lined it up down here and we added them up x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. 3x plus negative x, that would be the same as 3 plus a negative 1, or 3 minus 1 is 2, and 4 plus 1 is 5. The next one, like I said, if you need to put a 1 in front of your x to remember that that is 1x, you can. But the main thing is, is to, to make sure that when we look at what our terms are that separate, it's based on when I combine like terms, is it positive or negative? So in this one, I had 2x squared plus 3x squared. So that was positive. But in my middle, I've got 1x plus a negative 2x. So 1 plus a negative 2 is the same as 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. So that's why I have minus x. Okay. Any questions about that? Alrighty, and then we went in and we worked on um, our practice. We added at the page bottom of 289. We did the same thing on 290. And then we went on to subtracting, okay? And I told you guys that with subtraction, it's real easy to get my signs confused. So it's better to go ahead and write. So this is gonna be in lesson 132 on page 291 is where we're gonna start off, page 291. 
So subtracting, we said we want to, hold on, let me change that real quick. I'll do a different color since I've already been on red in this page. Oops. We want to change to adding the opposite. Remember, subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. So what I'm going to do is I want to change my problems from subtraction problems to adding the opposite. That means I'm going to keep my first polynomial exactly the same. So that's what we did here. I have 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. I kept that exactly the same when I wrote it vertically. Then what I did is I took that minus sign in the middle and we said, oh, I'm going to change that to a plus sign. But if I change my sign in the middle, then I have to change the sign of every term that follows that. So now x squared becomes negative x squared, positive x, whoop, I forgot my squared, becomes negative x, and plus 2 becomes minus 2. So when I rewrote this down here, I moved my plus sign. <clears throat> okay, I changed to addition, but then I had to take my opposite terms. Now I just follow my rules for addition. 3x squared plus a negative x squared. That's the same as 3x squared minus 1x squared. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So I have 2x squared. 2x plus a negative x is the same as 2 minus 1. So that would be a 1x. Okay. And then three plus a negative two is the same as three minus two. So that still leaves me with a positive one. Be sure to stop me if you have any questions and you're not sure why I've done something that I've done. <clears throat> and the next one, we did the same thing. I changed from subtraction to addition. And then I had to take the opposite of each term afterward. So this became negative X squared. This one became positive X. Now I have to have minus one. So when I rewrote that underneath it, notice I've got my plus sign down here, minus x squared plus x minus one. And now I just add 2x plus a negative x is going to be x squared. 2x plus a positive x is going to be 3x. And 5 plus a negative one is four. And then the last one, change my sign. But if I do, I have to change the sign of everything afterwards. So 3x squared becomes negative 3x squared. Negative 2x becomes positive 2x. Negative 1 becomes positive 1. I transfer those all down here. So now I have 5x squared plus a negative 3x squared. That's the same as five minus three is two. So two X squared, negative X plus a positive two X. So that'd be like negative one plus two would be a positive one. And then one plus one is two, okay? So now let's go ahead and look at <clears throat> activities two, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do with activities two is we are gonna rewrite our problem as adding the opposite. So we're gonna keep the first term as it is. So go ahead and rewrite 5x squared plus 5x plus three. We're gonna keep that one exactly the same. So go ahead and rewrite it. But now I'm gonna change in the bottom. I'm gonna make my minus sign a plus. I'm going to bring my plus over here and I'm going to have parentheses. <clears throat> now notice 3x squared is going to become negative 3x squared. Plus 2x will become minus 2x. Plus 1 will become minus 1. So I'm going to write that in my parentheses. So negative 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. Is everybody good with that? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is 5x squared plus negative 3x squared. 
So 5x squared plus a negative 3x squared, that's the same as 5 plus negative 3 or 5 minus 3. 5 minus 3 is 2, but I have to keep my x squared term with it. So 5x squared plus negative 3x squared is 2x squared. <clears throat> now, I'm going to have a positive 5x plus a negative 2x. So 5 plus negative 2 is the same as 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. It is positive, so it will be plus 3x. And then my last term. I have a positive 3 plus a negative 1. So 3 plus a negative 1 is the same as 3 minus 1. It is positive 2. OK. So now for the middle one, I want you to go ahead and rewrite your problem and solve. So keep 5x squared minus 2x plus 3 will stay the same. We're going to change this to plus minus x squared plus 4x plus 1. And I want you to go ahead and solve that one. <clears throat> All right, so on this one, the first thing I had to do was 5x squared plus negative x squared. This is the same as saying 5x squared plus a negative 1x squared. And 5 plus a negative 1 is a positive 4x squared. <clears throat> now, my next one, I have negative 2 plus a positive 4. So negative 2 plus 4, the sign of the larger is positive. The difference is 2. My variable is x. And then my last term, 3 plus 1, is a positive 4. So 4x four squared plus 2x plus 4. Everybody do OK? <clears throat> Let's do the last one. I need to change to addition. 5x squared becomes negative 5x squared. Positive 2x becomes negative 2x. And negative 3 becomes positive 3. So I'm going to rewrite. 7x squared minus x minus 1 plus negative 5x squared minus 2x plus 3. And then solve. Go ahead and solve that one.
Okay, so 7x squared plus a negative 5x squared. 7 plus a negative 5 is the same as 7 minus 5, and that will be 2x squared. Now I have negative x plus negative 2x. So that's like negative 1 plus a negative 2, or negative 1 minus negative 2, so it's going to be negative, excuse me, 3x. So look and see, did you get negative 3x? Then I have negative 1 plus a positive 3. Sign of the larger is a positive. The difference is 2. So 2x squared minus 3x plus 2. Any questions on those? Any questions? All righty. Let's go ahead and go to activities three on page 292. Um, let's see, there are six problems here. So what we'll do is we'll do the first three on the left-hand side together. And then the three on the right-hand side will become homework. So we'll go ahead and do these. So it says to write the problem vertically and subtract. So we'll go ahead and write our problem 3x squared plus 5x plus 4. Now remember, this is where I'm going to change and I'm going to put plus negative x squared minus 2x minus 3. So plus, actually my writing, my erasing stuff is still showing up. So let me erase it a little bit more. Okay. So plus negative x squared minus 2x minus 3. Go ahead and work that one. <clears throat> when you're finished, look up and check it. And after you've looked at that one and checked it, go ahead and do the next two below it. Go ahead and rewrite it and solve. Okay, let's look at the one in the middle. I rewrote the problem by keeping the first expression the same, 7x squared plus 2x plus 5 stayed the same. I changed my sign from subtraction to addition, and then I took the opposite of each term inside parentheses. So 4x squared became negative 4x squared, negative 2x became plus 2x, plus 3 became minus 3. Okay, so 7 plus negative 4, or 7 minus 4 is 3, keep my x squared. 
2x plus 2x is going to be plus 4x. And 5 plus a negative 3. 5 minus 3 is positive 2. Any questions on that one? And then the last one, rewrote the first term or the first um, polynomial, changed from subtraction to addition, took the opposite of each term after the sign change. So negative x squared became positive x squared. Positive 2x or plus 2x became negative 2x or minus 2x. And negative 3 became plus 3 or minus 3 became positive 3. So remember when I talk about plus something or minus something or positive or negative, it's the same thing, okay? It means I have a term and it's either a positive term or a negative term. If it's positive, then it's going to be plus whatever. If it's a negative, it will be minus whatever. So I can use plus and minus and positive and negative interchangeably. They're not two totally different things. They're the exact same thing, okay? Alrighty, so x squared plus x squared. Remember my understood um, coefficient of x squared is gonna be one and one plus one is two. So two x squared, negative x plus a negative two x is the same as negative one plus a negative two. So that is a negative three. My variable is x. And then negative <coughs> one plus a positive three, take the sign of the larger, find the difference. So 2x squared minus 3x plus 2. Any questions on those? Okay. So now what we're going to do is the right-hand three will be homework. So this will be homework. For four. What's today? The 12th. Okay, homework 412 will be subtracting those three problems. Remember, rewrite it by adding the opposite. Okay, so that'll be homework page 292. And now we're going to move on to lesson 133. Or is that 132? 132 on page 293. All right, so now we can see that now we're going to multiply. We have added, we have subtracted, and now we're going to multiply. So it says when multiplying monomials, multiply the coefficients. What's my screen doing? Multiply the coefficients. So let's stop for just a minute and think about what we said a coefficient is. Remember, the coefficient is the number in front of the variable. And there is the bell for the break. So we will come back after the break.
Alrighty. So I guess they forgot to ring the bell. I'll go ahead and get back to it. <laughs> Maybe Noah will come back in a minute. Okay, so we had just said that when multiplying little when multiplying monomials, we multiply the coefficients. And we said a coefficient is the number in front of the variable. So like if I have three X, this is my coefficient, just the number three, okay? The coefficient is just the number in front of the variable. So you multiply the coefficients to get the new coefficient and you multiply the variables to get the new variable, okay? So if I had three X times four X, I multiply three times four and that is 12. And then X times X is X squared. Now remember when I multiply variables, if it's the same variable, then I start having exponents. And if I have exponents, what I do is I add the two exponents together. So remember, this is the same as having an exponent of one. 
and that's an exponent of one. And so X times X is the same as having X and one plus one and at the top. And so then that becomes whoop, X squared because one plus one is two, okay? So that's what I do with my variables is I have to add the exponents of each variable. So in this situation, I had X first and X first. So I had to add one plus one is two, okay? So it says when multiplying like variables, add the exponents to get the new exponent. That's what we just talked about. I add the How exponents. Long have you guys been doing? We just started back a minute ago. They didn't ring the bell. When multiplying different variables, write all variables as a single product. So if I were to multiply X times Y, because they're different variables, I would just write it as X, Y. I have to write them both individually. I can't combine them if they are different variables. And then it says list your variables in order from highest degree to lowest degree. So if I were to have X cubed um, plus X squared plus X. Okay, so notice when I talk about highest degree, degree means my highest exponent. So X cubed is a third degree variable. It's X to the third power. X squared is a second degree. X without a variable is understood to be X to the first. And so that is um, first degree. Okay, so my, when it's talking about degree, it's talking about my highest variable and I go in descending order. So I start with my largest variable and then work my way. Now, if let's say I had X, squared plus x plus y. If I have different variables, not only do I go in descending order of variables, but I also go in alphabetical order. So I start with my x's first because x comes before y, and I go in descending order of my x's, or if I had additional y's, then I notice then, then I'm gonna do my descending order, but it's alphabetical order. So x's are first, then y's, okay? All righty, so the example they gave us is x squared times 2x, okay? And of course, my copy didn't come through very well, so let me clean that up a little bit. So it's x squared times 2x. So notice that one of the things that I'm going to look at is when I have the variable x, my understood coefficient is 1. And remember it said, I'm going to multiply the coefficients. So I've got one times two. And then I'm going to multiply X squared times X. Remember we talked about how that means I take my X and I add <coughs> the exponents. So two times one is two. And X squared times X, two plus one is three. So that's X cubed. Okay. So it says, notice the coefficients were multiplied and the exponents were added. So let's look at this next one where I have different variables. 3x times 2y. I still am going to multiply my coefficients 3 times 2. And 3 times 2 is 6. But because x and y are not the same terms, I just have to list them separately side by side in alphabetical order, okay? So six, X, Y. It says notice that the coefficients were multiplied, the variables are different, so they were written in alphabetical order as a product. So let's go ahead and look at our classwork. And the first one, let me rewrite that one because my copy's not good. I think that's supposed to be a two, right? Is it two X times three X squared in your book? Okay. So let's think about, remember, I'm going to multiply 2 times 3 is equal to what? 6. six. Now I have x times x squared. Remember, that's like having x to the first power plus <coughs> my second power. So I'm going to have 6x to the what power? To the third power because x squared times x is gonna be x to the third power. Because basically that means I've multiplied x times x times x. That's why it's x to the third power. 
because x squared is x times x. Is everybody good with that? Remember, x squared and 2x are not the same thing. X squared is X times X. 2X is two times X. Those are two different things. So I wanna make sure that I'm paying close attention that when I have a variable with an exponent, all I'm doing is keeping my exponent the same and that add, I keep my variables the same and add the exponents. Okay, so for that first one, I ended up with six X cubed. Let's look at the next one. Again, I start by multiplying my coefficients. What's three times two? Again, it's six. <clears throat> but notice now I have X times Y squared. Are these the same variables? Are X and Y the same? No. So I cannot combine them. I have to list them separately. <clears throat> and when I list them, they go in alphabetical order. So which one is going to come first after the six? Alphabetical order, which one comes first, X or Y? X. Then I'm going to have Y squared. Now, one of the things I want you to notice is when I see something written like this, it is understood multiplication. So if I knew what X was, so if X equals two and Y equals three, then that means I would have six times two times three squared. If X was two and Y was three, then I understand that I'd be multiplying these together. So I'd have six times two is 12 times three squared is nine. So 12 times nine is what, 108? <clears throat> so when I see a number with variables, I understand the operation to be multiplication. If I knew what X and Y were, I would plug them in and multiply, okay? So remember, if I just see my numbers side by side, I understand that that is multiplication. All right, let's look at this next one. What is two times three? Six. What is X times X? X what? Remember this is X times X. I have a variable of one. So that means I'm gonna add those variables. X to the second power or X squared, okay? And then I have nothing to multiply Y squared by, so I just put it with my answer. So six X squared, Y squared is the answer for that one. Any questions or is everybody following okay? If it's the same variable, I just add my exponents together. So let's go ahead and look at the bottom of our page. We've got a bunch of them to practice with, okay? So let's go down the left-hand side first. Let's just go from top to bottom. What am I gonna multiply first here? Three times four is? Twelve. And then X times X squared. How many X's would I have? If this is two X's and I have another X here, how many will I have total? Three. So I had two here and I have another one here. So that's X to the first times X to the second. So remember I add one plus two is X to the third, okay? So when I have those variables of the same when I have the same variables, I add the exponents. Look at the next one. Three times two is six. And what's X squared times X squared? X squared. Okay. So remember, what am I gonna do with those two what am I gonna do with these? 
What did we say we do with the with the exponents? Let's book, look back in our directions. Add them. Good. So we're going to add the exponents. When multiplying like variables, add the exponents. So what are the exponents here? Two plus two. What is two plus two? Four. So this is x to the fourth. So x to the fourth. Six x to the fourth is my answer there. All right, let's look at this one. What is my understood coefficient of x cubed? What number do I know is in front of that x? A one? And what's one times two? Two. Two. What am I gonna do with my three and my two variables? My, I'm sorry, my exponents. Add them, so I have my x, and what is three plus two? Five. So two x to the fifth. Any questions? Multiply the coefficients. If the variables are the same, you add the exponents. If they're not the same, you just list them out in alphabetical order. All right, what number is that by the y? My copy did not come through very well. What is that supposed to be? Two. Two, y squared. Okay. Wait, wait, no, there's nothing there actually. There's nothing there, okay, okay. So I guess what happened was I had something written but it didn't erase all the way. So we'll make that go away. Okay. So in this one, what number do I understand is in front of y? Just a one. And what's one times four? Four. Four. Now I have y times y squared. What is my understood exponent of y? It's just gonna be y to the first, right? So what am I gonna do with those exponents? I add my exponents, so I'm gonna have one plus two. So I'm gonna have four y to the what? Four y to the what? Mm -mm. What was my understood exponent of the first one? What do I have written right here? One. A one. What is my exponent here? Two. Two. Three. So 4y cubed, multiply the coefficients, add the exponents. Okay, let's look at the next one. What am I gonna multiply? What are my numbers? Three times five is 15. And y squared times y squared is gonna be y to the... Four. four, good, two plus two is four. So 15 y to the four. Let's look at the next one. Two times five is 10. And y cubed times y squared is gonna be y to the, what? What's my exponent of y going to be? To the fifth, good. All right, last one in the row, I think, yep. Three times four is 12. Y cubed or y to the third times y to the fourth is gonna be y to the, what? Seventh, good, awesome. So let's go middle row. All right, notice in the middle row, we have different variables here. Remember, if my variables are not the same, I cannot combine them. What's the only thing that I can multiply together in this one? Four, four and three. And what is three times four? 12. And then I'm gonna list these in order alphabetically, x, y squared. So the x stays the same. Y squared stays the same, but I just list them in order alphabetically. 
Remember that I understand that when they're listed out like this and there's no signs in between them, I understand it to be multiplication. Let's look at the next one. My variables are different, so I know there's nothing I can do in combining those. So what's the only thing that I can multiply together here? Two and three. What's two times three? Six. six. I've got to list them alphabetically. So what's going to come after six? X, X squared, then Y squared. Underneath that one, X cubed times 2Y squared. Remember the number in front of X that I understand is one, and one times two is just two. So my, and then what's going to come after the two? Need to go alphabetically. So is X cubed or Y squared going to come after two? X cubed, Y squared. Next one below it. One times four is four. So now four X, Y squared. Next row. What's the only thing I can multiply here? What's the only thing that can be multiplied? Three times five. What is three times five? Close. 15. I don't have anything I can combine with X squared. So X squared, nothing I can combine with Y squared. So 15x squared, y squared. Now what's two times five? Ten. Now we have 10, x cubed, y squared. There's nothing I can combine with those. Four times three is 12, x cubed, y to the four. Any questions on those? Now our last column, we are gonna have some things I can combine, but remember I can only combine the variables that are the same. All right, so first always start with your coefficients. So three times four is 12. Now I've got X times X. What is that gonna be? What's X times X? X to the second power, good. And then y to the second power is already there and there's nothing I can combine with it. So I just write it out separately. It comes last because alphabetically y becomes after, it comes after x. All right, let's look at the next one. Three times two is six. X squared times x is gonna be what? X cubed, nothing I can combine with that Y squared, so it just goes at the end. All right, I want you to do the next one. Do this one, go ahead and write your answer. Look at what are the ones you can combine. So what do I know, um, my first, why is my thing not charging? That's my plug. Let's see if that's charging up. There we go. All right, so what is my answer? What is my coefficient? What is my number? What did you multiply? One times two is two. two. X cubed times X is X to the fourth, because three plus one is four. And then Y squared, nothing to combine that with.
All right. I understand I have a one in front of X. One times four is four. X times X squared, X cubed, Y squared. Three times five is 15. X squared, X squared is X to the fourth. Nothing to combine with Y squared. Lastly, nope, not quite, almost. Two times five is 10. X cubed, X squared, or X to the third, X to the second, is gonna be X to the fifth, fifth Y squared. Three times four is 12. X to the third times X squared is X to the fifth, Y to the fourth. Okay, so all we're doing is multiplying the numbers together, then multiply the variables by adding the exponents, but only the ones that have the same can be added together. Let's check our time, 158. Okay. Let's look at um, page 294, activities three and four. Notice these next ones say to add and subtract. So we're gonna do the first two in each column, and then the others will be for homework. So we'll leave these four for homework. This will be homework for 12. But we'll do these over here together. All right, so let's kind of refresh our memory about how it is different to add and multiply. Okay, so remember when I'm adding whatever my variables are with my exponents, stay the same. I do not multiply them together. I do not add my exponents. When I add, my variables stay exactly the same, okay? So I know I'm gonna have something x squared plus something x minus something. So let's look at the first one. 3x squared plus 4x squared is equal to what? What's 3 plus 4? 7. So 7x squared. And then 2x plus 3x is what? 5x. And negative 4 plus 1. Negative 4 plus a positive 1 or negative 4 plus 1 is going to be minus three. So that first one is seven X squared. Let me write it without the lines. Seven X squared plus five X minus three. Any questions on that? Go ahead and do the next one on your own right below it. Go ahead and add it up. Write your answers. Okay, so I've got 2x squared plus 4x squared equals what? What's 2x squared plus 4x squared? What's 2 plus 4? 6x Six. Six squared. Now, I've got... 3x plus a positive 5x. What is 3x plus 5x? What's 3 plus 5? 8. Keep my variable of x. Now, 
I have positive two plus negative three. Two plus a negative three is the same as two minus three. Take the sign of the larger, find the difference. So six X squared plus eight X minus one. Check your answer, is that what you got? If you didn't, look to see why you didn't get that answer. What mistake did you make? Because part of understanding and learning is understanding when you make a mistake, why did you make that mistake and what do you need to do differently next time, okay? All right, so that's adding. So you'll have four addition, I'm sorry, yeah, four addition problems. Now let's do subtraction. Remember, this is where I'm going to change my signs. So we're gonna change this to a plus. I'm gonna make this minus two X squared, minus two X plus one. So that way I'm just marking out my bottom. So I can see I've got five X squared plus a negative two X squared. So five X squared plus a negative two X squared, five plus a negative two is three. Keep my X squared. 4x plus a negative 2x. 4 minus 2 is a positive 2. Keep my variable of x. 3 plus 1 is a positive 4. So we changed from subtraction to addition. We took the opposite signs of everything that came afterward in the second polynomial, and then we added. It's the same thing to the one below it. I'm going to change to addition. 3x squared becomes negative 3x squared. Negative 2x becomes plus 2x. Plus 1 becomes minus 1. So 5x squared minus 3x squared. Or 5x squared plus a negative 3x squared. 5 plus a negative 3 is a positive 2 x squared, 3x plus a positive 2x, three plus two is five, so five x, and two plus a negative one is a positive one, okay? So you have four addition problems, four subtractions that you need to change to adding the opposite. Okay, so that is um, activities three and four on page 294. Um, I think I wanna wait on dividing. I wanna give you a little bit more practice. I wanna give you time to kind of work through that homework. So actually let's go ahead and let's use the remainder of our class time to go ahead and work on that homework. So you've got activities three, page 292. Activities three, page 292. And then activities three, so let's see. Activities three, page 292. And then we have Activities three and four on page 294. Okay, so that's what you're going to work on right now. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll go ahead and turn on the light in here so y'all can see the work and let me know if you have questions. I can help you.
so the more these that are um, to subtract them, we want to change our minus to a plus. So go ahead and put a plus sign. But now we want to take the opposite signs of everything. So this was positive 6x squared. I'm going to make it negative 6x squared. So put a negative in front of that. Okay, this is a positive 3x, so I want to make it minus 3x. This is positive 1, so I want it to be minus 1. So all of this one stays exactly the same. So the first one stays the same, change my sign, but then everything afterward has to change. So now what is 8 plus a negative 6? Good. And then we're just going to keep x squared. And I'll have positive 7 plus a negative 3. Good. And what's the sign in front of it going to be? Is it positive or negative? One. Yeah, so, and I'll keep the sign of the larger. So 7 is bigger than 3, and it's positive, so I'm going to have positive 4. And that's going to have x with it. And then 4 plus negative 1. And what's the sign going to go in between it? How do you know what your sign is going to be? When you did 4 plus a negative 1, is it a positive 3 or a negative 3? So 4 plus a negative 1 is going to be a positive 3. So I'm going to put a plus in front of it. So it'll be plus 3. Okay. So this was a positive 2. So there's no reason to put a sign in front of it. This one was a positive 4. So I have a plus 4. This one is a positive 3. So I have plus 3. That was something I struggled with when I was in school was understanding what signs would go in between them. And it's just based on is it a positive or a negative term. Okay, so keep on going. I'll come back and check on you. Just remember to change that to plus and take the opposite signs. <clears throat> How you doing? <coughs> Good. So let's take a look. So three plus two is five. And you've got your x squared. What is positive four plus a negative two? Uh huh. Plus 2x squared, and then I'm going to be positive 2 plus a negative 5. Sign of the larger and find the difference. Great. Yes, very good. Same. That sounds going to go outside parentheses. Okay, Miss Jennifer, I'm done. Okay, you all done? Yeah. Awesome. Any questions? This is actually kind of easy. Okay, very good, very good. Well, if you're all done with it, you can go ahead and sign out and that's all we've got for homework. And then we will pick back up with reviewing this on Thursday. We'll review multiplying and then we're gonna learn dividing. Awesome. Okay, awesome. We'll have a great afternoon. We'll see you Thursday. Okay, bye. All right, bye Hunter.